Hello everyone, this is Jay from Lantern Side Story. Today's video is about the Hunter Call of the Wild. I just bought it during the sale and I'm really loving it, and wanted to make a video before the Steam sale ends. I'm actually making this video to make my friends into playing it with me. Think of this video as a guide from a noob to a noob to help you learn what to do as a new player. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that alarm button. In the Hunter Call of the Wild, you will become a hunter wandering in the beautiful and vivid open world environment to track, shoot and hunt the animals. But the new player who just arrived to the reserve often get lost on what to do, seeing no animals for hours, getting bored and leave the game. I almost had the same experience until I figured out some of the essential mechanisms of this game, and I wanted to share what I learned to those who share the same frustration that I have felt. I'm gonna first explain the 5 essential mechanism and then illustrate a strategy for the new player, followed by a guide on what DLC to buy and share my feelings about the game at the end. So let's start with 5 essential mechanisms. 3 of them is about Lee Jong and 2 of them is about the actual shooting. And here's our good friend Ayla the Huntress to illustrate what we learn. So what is an Lee Jong? Lee Jong is where animals eat, drink and rest during a certain time of a day. You can find the need zones by tracking or spotting the animal, and after you located the need zone for a certain animal, like for example the moose, you will have a high chance of finding that animal in that general area in that period of time. The drinking zone is the easiest to find, because the water source, river or lake is a fixed location. After you found the drinking zone, you can find other need zone near the area. Now you know where to find the animal, but you don't want to shoot the entire herd in that need zone. There are two reasons. One, there is something called hunting pressure. When you kill an animal, it will create the purple cloud of hunting pressure on the map. Hunting pressure means that animal is sensing your existence, and if the pressure is too high, the animal will avoid that area. Even more, if you kill more than three animals in the same spot, that will destroy the knee zone, adding extra hassle to find another knee zone. This actually refrains you from being trigger happy. To raise the hunting pressure in one place, you have to hunt in a different area, so you would want to cycle through the hunting grounds, shooting only the few best ones. Yes, you would want to shoot the best ones. Why? It is related to the trophy system. The animal have their own unique score regarding their weight and the size of the trophy. One of the end game goal of this game is to hunt the high score diamonds. The way I understand the respawn system is that when you kill an animal, they will respawn another one around the same size. So if you only cherry pick the heaviest ones, you will increase the chance of spawning more heavier ones, and potentially spawning the diamond. As a beginner, you should probably shoot anything you'll find, but it will be helpful to understand this respawn system for the future. So these were the three essentials about the knee zones. Find the drinking zone, move around to not stack the hunting pressure, and take the largest one if you can. Now it's time for shooting. Uh-uh. Before you shoot, there are two things that you would want to know. First is to find the right ammo. There are nine classes of animals categorized roughly depending on their size and toughness, and certain ammo are effective to certain classes. You don't want to use the smaller caliber to a big game, for it won't have the power. But also, you would not want to shoot the small game with the bazooka, cause you will ruin the trophy. On the shop menu, you can see which ammo is effective to each classes, and it is advised to carry multiple guns with different ammo types to cover the entire classes of animals you can find in the map. One small tip, for the rifle, you have a soft point that expands and polymer tip that penetrates. Generally, polymer tip is considered to be the better. Now, if you want a high score on your trophy, make sure you pass the 4 harvest check. 1. You gotta use the right ammo type. 2. You should avoid the trophy organ, mostly their skull. 3. You should hit at least one of the vital organs, brain, heart, lung, neck, or liver. And lastly, you should bring it down using only 2 or less bullets. You should focus on aiming for the lung when the animal is standing broadside. If you get more skilled, try aim for the heart or the neck, but most often, lung, especially double lung, is the safest bet. That's one of the reasons why the polymer tip is considered better, to make sure the bullet penetrates and reach the vital organ. 
There still are other things to learn, like wind direction, visibility, and so on, but you can take your time learning these. So, as a new player, what should you do? What's the strategy? First, if you don't have any DLC maps, you'll have Leighton Lake and Hishfelden. Don't go to Hishfelden. Leighton Lake is way easier. Then, you gotta hunt anything you see to gain experience and rifle points to unlock different gears. Your goal is to get Hyperion Scope, different colors, 7mm rifle if you don't have any DLC weapons, and range find or binocular. Leveling up will unlock good skills too. Now, your focus is to reveal the map, find the outposts and lead zones. Outpost is really handy for it allows you to fast travel. You gotta move from one outpost to find another. On your way, you'll have to check every river and lakes to find drinking zones. Often, you'll find something to shoot near the drinking zone. Take the shot. This process will help you find knee zones and familiarize yourself with the reserve. You might also find animals on the way. When you walk or run around the field, you will hear the call from the animals. Stop immediately and crouch. Time to use the collar. You have deer collar from the start, so use it to call the deer to come close. While luring them, hide under a short tree or a bush with a good wind on your face and preferably where you have a clear sight. When the animal that got shot runs away, follow the blood trail. In the default setting, the blue track is the one you've spotted, white is the other animal. If you miss the vital organ, the animal can run kilometers away, so it might be wiser to ignore it if the tracking takes more than about 3 minutes. You will lose the precious consecutive hunting bonus, but as a beginner, tracking that's too long can be frustrating. As you get more confident with the shot placement, you will drop it quicker to make the tracking more manageable. With this strategy, I was hunting about 3 or more deers per hour regularly. This game can be difficult and it requires a lot of patience, but the thrill when you finally take the shot for a clean hit is just so rewarding. But for those of you who just started and want the action right away, I give you the Silver Ridge Peak. With the beautiful scenery of Rocky Mountains straight out of the American Sublime and the variety of animals from turkey to bison, this here, ladies and gentlemen, is where the fun happens. A clear open view combined with the abundant population of animals, you will have no problem finding the herd after herd just by taking a stroll. With careful placement of outposts located near the lakes, you can jump around the map to shoot and move on while maintaining the hunting pressure at a minimum level. This is the best map for the new players to enjoy, level up, and learn the game. So, are you ready to sign? Yup, the Silver Ridge Peak is amazing. I told you I hunted 3 per hours in Leighton Lake, I'm hunting like up to 10 per hour in the Silverage Pig, and with all the levels and cash I earned here, I can actually try the other maps packed and prepared. Now, about the DLCs, this game is a bit notorious about its excessive amount of DLCs, but you don't have to buy all of them. Here's a guide on what to pick. There are 3 qualities of life DLCs, Tent, ATV, and Tripod. Tent is a must for you can set up your own extra travel points up to 16 tents per man. ATV can be really helpful to unlock the outpost early on. And when you are playing with your friends, if at least one of you have the DLC, all of you can use the ATV. Tripod is really handy for shooting in the tripod reduces the hunting pressure to 1 fourth, but it is not necessity for the beginners. There are 6 map DLCs, all of them are pretty cool, but I will recommend a few. Silver Ridge Peak, well, buy it. Yukon Valley is quite useful because the DLC also includes the .300 rifle, which is one of the best guns for the big games. I heard Savannah Talonga is also quite easy and does add some variety to the animals. Medved Taiga has beautiful scenery, but it has a higher difficulty, so keep that in mind. Similar to ATV, only the host need to buy the DLC mask for your friends to join. There are 4 weapon packs, 1, 2, 3, and smoking barrels. Vanilla guns are as good as DLC guns, so these are not essential, but DLC guns are unlocked right from the beginning which can help you hunt the big games from the start. I'm enjoying the weapon pack too because you can cover every animals in the Silverage Peak with the guns in the pack, but weapon pack 3 and 4 are the most recommended by everyone. For the other miscellaneous DLCs, high-tech DLC can be helpful for nighttime hunting and it makes bow hunting super easy to enjoy. 
Dock and Keys DLC can be good for early cash, but it's unnecessary. And Trophy Lodge depends on your preference. Saseka Safari has a lot of room for big games, and Spring Creek Manor is for smaller games. For me, decorating the Trophy Lodge is a great motivation. I'm loving this game, but I do understand that this game is not for everyone. This game has a slow tempo and a very slow walking speed. For those of you who want the fast action or doesn't have a long time to relax and invest in this game, it might not be for you. Still, this game has one of the most beautiful sceneries you can find in games. The slow tempo can be relaxing and the thrill and tension you feel when you stalk and shoot the high score game is an experience unique to this game. I just hope that this video is helpful to you to find enjoyment in this game. So this is all from me. If you are new to the channel, I make illustrated story videos of the games I play, so if you like what I'm doing here, please subscribe for there will be more to come. Your likes and comments also help me tremendously. And thank you all for watching, I'll be seeing you next time.